Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. BNIC pays out more than $19 million and processes over 26,000 applications under the Economic Relief Program. International travel resumes to the island under revised protocols. And draft protocols for beach vendors under review as the tourism industry reopens. The National Insurance Corporation, NIC, has made major headway in the delivery of the Economic Relief Program, ERP, over the last few weeks. Under the program, the NIC provides financial support to contributors to help them navigate the financial challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. As of the 8th of July 2020, 26,161 applications have been processed and a total of $19.5 million has been paid to qualifying applicants covering the months of April and May. NIC's communications manager, McNaughton McLean, says that while payments have been made to all applicants for April and May with completed information, a number of applications remain on query, which the NIC is actively engaged in resolving. The backlog of queried claims has been reduced to 810, which is 3.09% of total applications processed to date. This represents a significant reduction in the initial batch of 4,777 that formed 47.76% of the flood of applications for income support at the start of the Economic Relief Program in April. How fast an applicant gets paid under the ERP for a particular month depends on the following critical elements. Accuracy of the information provided by the employee on the ERP e-form, the timing of filing the application, example filing for April in June, and the employer uploading relevant employee information via the employer portal on a timely basis. Although we have made over 20,000 payments, some applicants would experience considerable delays as a result of incomplete or inaccurate information relating to their applications. The NIC took the decision to process applications for the months of April and May 2020 and make payments to these applicants in the absence of upload by some employers in, or, in order to expedite payments to these applicants because some of these applications had remained unpaid for too long the information was too slow in coming from some employers. The NIC empathized with the applicant and understood the challenges confronting them, and the NIC could reasonably assume that persons were not in employment for that period. While the NIC has used its discretion for the period mentioned, McLean explained what will obtain going forward. The NIC is aware that most employees outside the tourism sector have returned to work during the month of June, and it would be contrary to the spirit and intent of the program to pay economic relief support to persons in receipt of a salary. The NIC is also aware that some employers are either reluctant or unwilling to send in or upload the information necessary for the NIC to ascertain the employment status of the applicant. Reluctantly, because of this, the NIC will only be processing payments for the month of June for applicants whose employers have provided the information required by the NIC. In such cases, applicants should expect at a minimum to wait a long time before receiving any payment from the NIC. And that's for the period of June. The NIC has commenced making payments for June. Claimants who previously applied for the ERP are not required to reapply. However, employers are required to provide updated information in the employer portal on the NIC website on the status of their employees as this is critical to ensuring that employees are paid in a timely manner. Meanwhile, on Sunday, July 12, the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan for St. Lucia will be unveiled. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service Honorable Alan Chastney has explained that the plan is part of the government's structured and long-term response to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The plan was prepared by the Ministry of Finance with recommendations from the Economic Recovery Multisectoral Committee, comprising representatives from the private sector, trade unions and employers. That body was tasked with making recommendations to prepare an economic recovery and resilience plan given the adverse effects that the lockdown and physical distancing measures have had on the earnings of all sectors within the economy. 
Because of COVID-19, I don't know when I'll be at work again. Because of the coronavirus, we've lost 80% of our revenue. How can the government bank start the economy? Corona took us unexpected, so it's not like we can blame the government, but we're just uncertain of the future. As a bus driver, how do that stimulus package help you? Yeah, since the coronavirus, things have not been the same. I just want to know, what would the government do to help single mothers take care of their children? Concerning the stimulus package, I would like to know how would it be implemented. Tune in on Sunday as we present the St. Lucia Economic and Recovery Resilience Plan. There's something there for everyone. Together, we will continue to build a new and stronger St. Lucia. The COVID-19 Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan seeks primarily to curtail the impact that both global and domestic economic contraction is having on the business sector, drive economic activity through public sector capital investment projects, protect the poor, marginalized, and most vulnerable segments of the St. Lucian population, accelerate reforms that will build the resilience of the private and public sector, and strengthen the health system. The plan will be detailed Sunday, July 12 at 8 p.m. on the national television network NTN and local partner stations. St. Lucia welcomed international travel activity Thursday 9th July as revised travel protocols came into effect. Pre-testing prior to travel is mandatory. Visitors must provide a negative PCR test result taken seven days or less before travel to St. Lucia. All arriving passengers are screened, including temperature checks, at the Hiranore International Airport. Donalyn Vite is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Tourism. She spoke to the protocols in an update to the nation. We know there may be slip-ups um, in that system. We are preparing for the slip-ups, and so this is why the PM would have, the Prime Minister would have alluded to the testing on arrival. This is, this is not the, um, the, the travel protocol that we have established significantly, but it is there to be able to mitigate any shortfalls within the system, and I thank the Prime Minister for indicating that to the public. So is it there to accommodate perhaps someone who may have arrived with a negative test, but by the time they get to St. Lucia, would have perhaps been exhibiting symptoms? Would that is one of the reasons, significantly. Into, it's right. there to ensure that any gaps are closed and are closed at the airport so that persons who enter in St. Lucia do not have that opportunity to go and mingle or co-mingle with persons to increase the risk. Any symptomatic passengers will be isolated and tested. They will be required to remain in quarantine, isolation at the hotel or government-operated quarantine facility until the test result is obtained. If the test is positive, they will be transferred to a treatment facility until they receive two negative test results and are clinically stable. Effective Friday, July 10, 2020, there will be a further relaxing of measures instituted to protect the nation from COVID-19. Cinemas will reopen. Early childhood development centers are also to open. Tournaments, sporting events and contact sports with protocols for spectators are being allowed. The yachting sector will reopen with strict protocols. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George says it is important that the protocols at cinemas be observed. Children who have respiratory signs and symptoms would not be allowed um, in. So in those cases, parents would have to keep those children um, at home. And the disinfection and cleaning of, that, um, of those areas would have to be a lot more frequent than before. And also the habit of putting more than one child within close proximity would no longer be allowed. So it's a lot of new measures, unfortunately, that we, we, we have to adopt to, to reduce any possibility of, of contamination because we know with children, um, they, they, they go on to each other. It's more difficult to be able to implement those measures. So it means, first of all, they would not be able to take in the volume of kids that they normally have at any one point. So this is another thing. The number of kids that you take into one space would be reduced and the measures that you put in place um, at the facility would have to change. Are you requiring the children themselves to be wearing masks? Um, no, we're not allowing the children to, to wear masks because what the, the, the recommendation for masks, if you sufficiently 
distance with the necessary measures. You don't have to keep the mask on all of the time. Protocols for the early childhood centers or daycare centers were developed in conjunction with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards and Ministry of Education. We look at infection prevention and control, with, with which the staff of the cinema has to make sure um, are in place for everyone coming in. And also it won't be what we normally see in the cinema where everybody just sits together. Um, similar to the seating within the religious organizations, mm -hmm. families can sit together in the same pew or in the same bench, but you can't have everybody sitting in close. So it would have to be either alternate or every two other seats mm -hmm. to ensure spacing. And also the crowding and grouping where you get your drinks and your eats, physical distancing would have to be implemented at that level. The curfew instituted at the height of the pandemic in St. Lucia has also been lifted. The National Conservation Authority, NCA, has appealed to seaside vendors to await clearance before resuming their trade as St. Lucia's hotels and tourism sector reopens in a pilot phase. 17 properties, including hotels, sites and attractions, have attained COVID-19 compliance. In addition, 56 day boat operators have been cleared by the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, to operate in a pilot phase. Understanding the beach vendors are anxious to return to plying their trade, NCA Commercial Services Officer Lydia Cox stressed that this must be done in adherence to protocols specific to the enterprise. However, they cannot return to the beach until we say so, because there are a number of things that need to be put in place. Protocol, the protocols for the activities on the beach. Also, we have to look at the training of these vendors because everything is going to be different now. It's not going to be business as usual. And for this reason, we've, uh, we've asked our vendors to stay away from the beach until we've put everything in place to ensure that they are safe and that the persons that they are dealing with, the people that they will be dealing with are also safe. Draft protocols for beach vendors are currently being reviewed for approval. Meantime, the NCA office has assisted some vendors with applications for income support offered by the government of St. Lucia to non-contributors of the NIC whose livelihoods suffered due to the effects of the pandemic. We have been assisting them from the office by applying on their behalf. Wow. However, I would like to say to the vendors that you need to pay your <laughs> NIC. Moving forward, you need to pay your NIC because it is your money you're putting away for later. Mm -hmm. And um, we none of us saw what was going to happen today with COVID. But besides, when you get older, when you retire, when you can no longer work, this is what you're going to be depending on to give you a little something on a monthly basis so you can survive. Um, so we'd like to encourage them to now look at this whole thing and revisit how they do their business and to pay the NIC contribution. That was Lydia Cox, Commercial Services Officer at the National Conservation Authority. The NCA is also appealing to beachgoers to clean up after themselves, noting a stark contrast of the pristine condition of the shores during the COVID-19 restrictions and the resumption of indiscriminate waste disposal as the beaches reopened. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. It is possible for infected food handlers or workers to introduce the COVID-19 virus into food or onto surfaces within the food business by coughing and sneezing or through hand contact unless they strictly follow good personal hygiene practices. Food handlers must wash their hands before starting work, before handling cooked or ready-to-eat food, after handling or preparing raw food, after handling waste, after cleaning duties after using the toilet, after blowing their nose or sneezing or coughing, after eating or drinking, and after handling money. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow St. Lucia's access to clean, healthy, and safe food. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best.
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci, Otra Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Service, GIS, and Television National PIA NTN, Caposoto Nouvelle Aquayol. Posito, Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre, c'est ici, on est Alain Chasney, qui a nation, qui a adressé nation, dimanche le 12 juillet, pour présenter le plan gouvernement à sa façon pour ressusciter l'économie du pays avec le plan de résilience. Ce qui a fait à 8 ans, c'est à sa télévision nationale pays à NTN. Premier ministre Chasney, qui a une responsabilité pour la finance, l'augmentation économique, pour faciliter l'emploiement parmi l'autre position, explique qui Initiative Salah, c'est plan gouvernement, un effort pour adresser la situation de maladie corona pour cet acte qui vient. C'est le ministère des Affaires et Finances qui a préparé le plan Salah, avec la recommandation d'un comité qui est responsable pour la ressuscitation de l'économie. Et le comité Salah, ni représentatif représentatifs secteur privé, les syndicats et les unions pays et les employeurs. Le comité a ni pour présenter la recommandation en façon pour préparer un plan de résistance et de résilience économique du pays. En bas, considération, c'est vrai que ça a qui en place pour abattre la maladie, le corona, et principalement, comme la situation de distance sociale qui a affecté tout secteur de l'économie, c'est le gouvernement bien au courant. Et puis, des gré pèse la maladie, ça a à ce pays, comme la panique pièce segment, c'est le qui n'a pas qu'à sentir force, mais la maladie, ça a. Plusieurs personnes ont perdu le travail et ont perdu la famille pour sa payer pour service d'utilité et pas même capable de pour soigner les Le gouvernement a pris des marches pour implémenter de diverses façons pour immédiatement adresser la situation. Et que parmi eux, c'est un programme national pour soigner les gens qui ont payé et qui n'ont pas de travail présentement. Le plan de ressuscitation économique, c'est ceci, c'est principalement pour chercher à ces diverses façons pour mouler ces stats économiques et aussi domestiques la terre à ce secteur business cette ci et pour protéger les pauvres et les autres qui les plus faiblesse en population pays plan ça là qu'a aussi chercher façon pour bâtir résilience secteur privé pour renforcer le système santé et pour continuer à bâtir résilience cette ci généralement alors la journée invitation pour tout ce qui est gardé pour moi adresse à la à sur télévision NTN et l'autre station de télévision dimanche le 12 juillet à 8h soir pour encourager tout ce qui est pour continuer la route ça là ensemble. Autorité pour conserver sa conservation nationale ça c'est NCA chaque prend des marches pour préparer comme pays qui a commencé qui a reçu les étrangers à quoi quoi. Le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a annoncé que le pays de ci a commencé à vivre au pays normalement, malgré ce qu'il a fait à la, tout protocole, à la, tout protocole avec la règle des maladies de corona. J'ai ainsi à Mme Jacinta Lee qui a conseillé les gens qui ont une activité de la mer pour ne pas continuer à dégliser la belle et la propreté de la mer pays. Mme Lee qui a discuté l'opération ainsi à son NTN a fait public la savoir que qualité mal propre qui a quitté bord de la mer cette ci c'est pas yon qui a fait bord caillou en pièce façon vous savez um, les moun aller à ce beach là mm -hmm. yo just content quitter zodio tout bas tout de de de, de OK et nous ka di moun le ou ka aller aller mm. et puis zodio okay. right il ni moun ka di comme ça ah si nous pas quitter zodia là Um, um, right, pas pas Ça c'est magie, oui, oui. right? Um, so, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Le le ou ou pas faire ça, ou pas mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. jeter bagay um, mm -hmm. tout partout. Officier qui est ça pour service commercial à NCA, Lydia Cox, qui a fait public la compagne qui compte y a vivre ca au pouvoir normalement et qui prend un petit temps avant mon qui ça c'est le bord de la mer pays. Cox fait compagne qui toutes ces grandes activités qui étaient après coup bord de la mer, qui se suspendent pour pour la sanion étrangement spéciale pour ces revendeurs-là qui a tout le marchandise au bord de la mer pays.
So avant nous faire ça, nous avons dit que les pays ne peuvent pas aller à bord de pour Ivan. Nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons dit que nous avons dit qui a allé à bord de la mer, oui. et qui a fait des choses, parce qu'il a fait des choses, un normal neuf. Oui. Un bagay oui. neuf. Donc, oui. so, nous avons fait des choses qui ont fait des choses à présent. Donc, pour actuellement, nous ne pouvons pas faire personne. Mm -hmm. C'est le temps où nous avons fait des choses, nous ne pouvons pas faire personne avant de nous faire ça. Nous ne pouvons pas mettre en place avant. Mm -hmm. Un autre bagay c'est um, activité bon bon beach là où ça nous quand il go activité comme mercury mm -hmm. nous toutes ces go um, bagay comme go on savait wet fête mm -hmm. bagay comme ça actuellement mm -hmm. nous pas ni un rien comme ça mm -hmm. actuellement nous avons fait un petit bagay sous ni un petit bof de parti pour un petit mama et peut-être nous quand et ben un monde voulait faire un os mm -hmm. un un os avait le monde voulait mailler nous quand parler puis yo un petit bagay mais mm -hmm. pas un rien qui go toutes ces bagay ça là quand il pour faire différent ah ben, avion qui a commencé à vol pour poser à son propre pays, à Simena, ça c'est Simena ici, avec le cinéma, avec diverses activités de sport, j'ai trouvé permission pour opérer, aussi institution d'éducation des enfants en parmi l'autre. Le ministre des Affaires agricoles, Ed Pech, déclaré qu'il n'y a plus de confiance à ce programme que le gouvernement a implémenté pour assister les femmes afin de l'autre cultivateur pays. On a dit que Joseph, ni espoir qui, c'est l'assistance cela qui a apporté bon soulagement pour l'économie agricole pays là, en bas malade du corona. Selon le ministre agricole là, et puis coopération les FAMA, et officier extension agricole, et puis le gouvernement c'est ici, c'est l'assistance cela qui a apporté un bon soulagement pour aider les cultivateurs à manger les affaires plus meilleures. So, moi, je suis that based on so intervention du gouvernement, Um, quoi, nous tous savons, um, ça fait que c'est une private entité, mais le gouvernement um, où est nécessaire pour, pour bâtir ce port. Nous, nous bâtir ce port et nous voulons, en behalf of ministry et puis, of course, en behalf of farmers, là, we merci le Premier ministre et puis, aussi, we merci le cabinet là, pour nous comprendre et puis, ce port, il y aura bâtir le ministre, ça, les venir pour um, um, programmes, nous allons implémenter pour make sure that farmers nous sont confortables. Le ministre honorable Ezekiel Joseph a parlé à l'air, côté il a signé un chèque en valeur de 1,4 million de dollars pour payer des dettes de Winfresh pour NFTO. Et c'est comme ça que nous retrouvons votre nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer comme ça fait la vie. Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle à Creole. À présent, je vous remercie pour votre journal. Merci à Bill Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.